Before we get started on the ins and outs of troponin, it's really important to understand what the normal value is. The normal value is going to be less than 0.035 nanograms per milliliter. Now, different labs are going to have different troponin assays or tests that they're going to do, and the normal values are going to vary. What you need to do is figure out what normal is, is where you're at, so the, whatever the facility says, and where that cutoff is. So for all intents and purposes, you, can, you should consider anything greater than 0.35 as an elevated level, and we're going to look at the ins and outs of that. Now, in order to get a better understanding of why we look at troponin, let's look at what troponin actually is. Well, troponin is, is a protein, and it's found in cardiac and skeletal muscle. And what happens is when the cell is damaged, troponin is released into the bloodstream, and it is therefore detectable. So when you have cardiac cell damage or this thing called myocardial cell uh, necrosis, you're going to have this increase of troponin that floods into the bloodstream. So why, why does myocardial cell damage happen? Well, it happens because of decreased perfusion to, uh, to the heart tissue. So let's quickly recap so we're all on the same page. If you have decreased perfusion here or decreased oxygenation to the heart tissue, the heart tissue dies or is damaged and troponin is released. So decreased perfusion equals decreased oxygenation means the cardiac tissue releases troponin. So the next question should be, when does that decreased oxygen to the heart tissue occur? Well, you're typically going to see this in a couple of cases, but the big one that we're going to want to talk about is a myocardial infarction or also known as an MI or heart attack. To understand the ins and outs of an MI really well, please go check out that lesson. The other time that you're going to see decreased oxygen uh, to the heart is something called demand ischemia. And what that means is that you have a decrease of oxygen, which is the ischemia, as a result of high demand. So there are lots of reasons to why this happens. So some are cardiogenic in nature, and meaning that they start from the heart. And there are also cases where they aren't heart related. And we're going to go into some of those a little bit later in the lesson. But the big takeaway here is that if your heart is not getting oxygen, the heart tissue is going to be uh, damaged or it will die. And then you're going to have this increase in the release of troponin into the bloodstream. So what do we need to know about the lab itself? Well, first off, when you get the blood, most times you're going to submit it in a green top tube. And that has heparin in it. And if your patient has uh, only had chest pain or heart attack maybe less than an hour, your troponin levels aren't going to be high. So you're going to have to recheck them. Um, you're going to see the detection usually in 6 to 12 hours after the injury, and it peaks um, at around 24 hours. The other thing is it can actually stay elevated for up to a week. Okay, so you're taking care of your patient, and you get, this, you get your labs back, and you have an increased troponin, and it's greater than 0 0.35 nanograms per milliliter. So anytime you have the increased troponin, it's almost always considered a critical lab. That means there's some sort of heart injury that's occurred or it's still occurring, and you got to figure out why. you got to figure out what's going on. Usually the first thing you're going to do is get an EKG. Um, so you'll look at your rate and rhythm, and you may have to take them to the cath lab to do something called a per percutaneous coronary intervention or PCI. So you'll hear them say, oh, we're going to the cath lab. Sometimes you'll do what's called angiography. Um, to figure out what's going on to see if there's really a blockage because that's what the that's what the MI is. It's a blockage of those coronary arteries. I want to encourage you to pay attention to what's going on with your patient. If your patient is having a is having those typical heart attack symptoms, so they're going to have chest pain or it could radiate. They could have nausea or vomiting, and in women it could um, be something as simple as uh, something that feels like a reflux or an upset stomach. If your patient is experiencing any one of those things and your trope is elevated, you got to figure out what's going on with your patient. Now, there are a couple instances where you're going to have like baseline increased troponin levels. So if your patient has had something, uh, this is called a cabbage. It's a coronary artery bypass graft. It's also commonly known as bypass. Triple bypass, double bypass, quadruple bypass. That's what that is. Um, 
and you're going to have a, some slight elevation in troponin then. In some extreme athletes, you're going to, like your marathoners or your people that do Ironmans, you're going to have an elevated trope, but it's a really small percentage, and the trope elevation is usually pretty minimal. You can also see it in in adrenal failure or another one you'll see it in is sepsis. You can also see it um, in cases of acute coronary syndrome, ACS, or some sort of tish, some sort of uh, issue where the heart is just not receiving enough blood and oxygen. Again, that's going to go back to demand ischemia. And that is, that's when the, that heart is just not getting enough blood and it's not getting oxygen. Again, this goes, this is one of those conditions that, that's just putting extra stress on the heart and you're going to have slight uh, elevations in troponin then. But the big thing here that you need to know is if you have the increased troponin, and your patients are experiencing uh, symptoms for a heart attack or an MI, and you're suspecting that's what's going on, you need to act quickly and you need to figure out what's going on with your patient. So for our troponin lesson, we really focused on the uh, the nursing concepts of lab values and making sure that your heart, uh, that the heart is getting the oxygen it needs from perfusion. So let's recap. Elevations in troponins mean that there is some sort of cell damage uh, in the heart. It doesn't always have to be super high, but any sort of cellular damage at that level uh, can cause that, that troponin to be released into the bloodstream, and it's going, going to become detectable. 0 .0, 0 0.035 nanograms per milliliter is our cutoff, and anything higher than, than that is considered a critical value. Again, your, your facility standards are going to vary and that's dependent on the type of test they have. So check with your facility to see what that standard is. Troponins are going to be detectable at 6 to 12 hours after. It's going to peak within 24 hours, and it can last for up to a week. So it's important to know your patient history. And if it's acute, you need to understand, you need to figure out why these elevations are happening. You want to make sure that your patient's not having a heart attack. You need to uh, check on them and see what's going on. And if you're suspicious that there is a heart attack going on, then you need to go check them out and get them uh, treated promptly. So that's it for our lesson on troponin. Make sure you check out all the resources attached to this lesson. Now go out and be your best selves today. And as always, happy nursing.